day two on linear regression is going to focus primarily on residuals. As a refresher from the last notes video, a residual is the observed data value minus the expected value, always in that order. Uh, also, sometimes it's written as the actual minus predicted or y minus y hat. There's another thing that we're going to be talking in the, about in this portion uh, of the notes called the r squared value. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's just the R value squared. And that tells us the percentage of variation in the response value that's explained by the model. So let's say we have a sample of nine SAT scores. Math scores we're going to use as the explanatory variable. Verbal scores is the response. We run a regression to create a line of best fit to predict a student's verbal score based on their math score. In these nine scores, they fall perfectly in a straight line Obviously, in real life, uh, this would pretty much never happen, but we get an R correlation value of 1.0 in this equation. Now, what we're looking at here is called a residual plot. A residual plot shows how large or small all the residuals are. In this case, all the points were exactly on the line. All the residuals are zero. So all of our residuals are right on this line here, which is zero. Normally, we would have some above, some below, et cetera. Okay, the R squared I had mentioned is just the R value squared. Uh, so we had 1.0 for the R value. We square it, we write it as a percentage, uh, we get 100%. That means 100% of the variation in SAT verbal scores is explained by SAT math score. In other words, based on these nine scores, if we know a student's math score, we can use it to predict exactly what their verbal score is. That's because all these uh, points are perfectly in a line. Let's add a 10th point. It's gonna be this point right here, and this point is not on the line. Okay, it's a little bit above it, and it's actually pull the, gonna pull the entire red line up just a little bit, and now that red line doesn't go through any of the points. We still have an extremely strong correlation. The R value is 0.999, so it's not quite one anymore, and our equations changed just slightly. And here's our new residual plot. So we can see our new point is this one floating way in the top up here. Okay, but we also see that since the line was pulled towards that point, uh, all those other points are just slightly underneath it. Now, these are all still really close to that line of best fit. We can see the residuals here. These are all about like one for residual. This outlier even, even we wouldn't call it an outlier based on the, um, the line of best fit, but that's about nine away. And this is in terms of SAT scores. So these are very small residuals. The R squared, which is just that R of 0.999 squared is 99.8%. So that means if we have an uh, SAT math score, we can predict the student's verbal score extremely well. All those points lie not perfectly in a line, but very, very close to the line. 99.8% or almost all of the variation in their verbal scores can be explained by what they score on the math section. Now we add a bunch more. We add seven more points. We can see there's a lot more scatter. Our R value drops. It's still a strong R value, but it's nowhere near 1.0 anymore. Uh, and our equation is a bit different. And here's the residual plot. We can see if we look at it side by side with the actual scatter plot, each of these points pairs up with a point in the residual plot. That's this one here. This one over here is this guy. The points that the line runs through are these ones right here, etc. Okay, we can see that the scale has gotten a lot larger. It went from zero to 10 on the last residual plot. This one goes from zero to 100. And our R squared, which was that 0.866 or whatever it was squared, uh, is telling us that 75% of the variation in SAT verbal scores can be explained by the SAT math score. This is a lot more realistic number considering the context of the problem. When we have someone's SAT math score, we can usually use that to get a general idea for how well they do on the verbal section, but it's not gonna be an exact match. It's not gonna be 100% like it was in that first one, or even 99.8% like in that second one. Uh, obviously, the higher the no this number is, the higher the square uh, R squared is, the better our predictions are. The lower it is, the farther away our predictions are, the more scatter there is in the scatter plot. So that's an ex explanation of residual plot. Now we wanna look at residual plots every time we make 
a regression equation. And the reason is because sometimes we can see things in residual plots that we can't see in a normal scatter plot. So if we were to look at this scatter plot at first glance, this appears to be somewhat straight, linear, positive, strong correlation, no unusual features. When we actually have the idealized regression equation drawn in, we can see that maybe it isn't so straight after all. Uh, I'm looking at this graph over here. And when we look at that, we can see that on the left side, we have points under the graph, then it rises above it, and then it dips back under. So this actually isn't linear. It's more um, curved like that. This is nonlinear. It's hard to see in the scatter plot, but if we look at the residual plot over here, we can see a distinct parabolic shape. When we look at a residual plot, we don't want to see any shape at all. We want to see complete scatter, no patterns, no shape. This is more like what we want to see in a residual plot. Okay, We have a certain number of points above it, below it, they're spread out. There's no patterns that we can see here. Uh, anytime we run a regression, we look at this plot. If we see patterns, we stop and we don't use the equation for predictions. If it looks okay, uh, then we can go ahead and start plugging in values into our regression equation. Now, another thing is you should be able to read this plot in tandem with one another, meaning if it asks you to find the residual for this point here, we should be able to pick that out of our residual plot. Okay, so that's approaching 25. Looks like that's going to be this one right here. And let's say it's about, I don't know, 20. Um, so uh, there are questions on the exam where it'll give you both graphs and you'll have to say what's the point that has, what's the x value of the point that has the smallest residual. So take this one, find it over here, uh, and it's about six or seven. So back to R squared. R squared is the R value squared. Uh, it's written as a percentage. It's always between zero and 100%. Uh, if the correlation was exactly one for this Burger King problem, uh, it would mean that the fat values were perfectly predicted by the amount of protein in a burger. There's no variation. Everything would lie exactly in a straight line. Obviously, that's not the case. The correlation is 0.83. It's not perfect. Uh, so the question is how much variation is in the model and how much is in the, in the residuals? Thought of another way, how well will that equation that we looked at in the last set of notes predict fat values based on protein? So that's where the R squared comes in. It's telling us what percent of the variation in the response variable can be explained or accounted for by the explanatory variable. In the Burger King problem, the R was 0.83. So we take that, we square it, and we get the R squared of 0.689, which allows us to write the statement, 68.9% of the variability in total fat can be explained by the protein of a Burger King menu item. Uh, again, R squared is always between zero and 100%. 100% is when the data is in a perfectly straight line. Uh, there's no um, variability in the residuals. The residuals are just flat. A 0% R squared is the reverse of that. Uh, we don't have any form at all on the scatter plot, so all of the variation is in the residuals. When it comes to writing the equation for the R squared, you do have to be specific. There's two examples here of how you can do it. But the key thing is that we always just start off by writing what the R squared is, and it's about the variation in the response variable. Okay, you have to have the word variation there and response variable in context of the problem. Follow that by saying it's accounted for uh, or explained by the explanatory variable. Okay, or you can just say by the model.